Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mike Flanagan here with Coach Shady, and today we're gonna to talk about the evolution of a bowling ball. That's right, Mike. You know, over the years, they've created lots of different materials, starting with rubber back in the early 1900s. We're gonna take a look at that early cover stock. We're gonna go into the plastics. The pros adopted those in the 1970s. And then we're gonna go into your things, and your thing kind of cha changed where we see things today, lots more hook. And eventually, we're gonna look at high performance cover stocks, reactive resin, what we see today. So here we go, it's time for a lesson on the evolution of the bowling ball. We're going to start with the first generation bowling ball, the rubber bowling ball made back in the early 1900s. This ball is an ebonite rubber bowling ball, very, very hard. We saw the pros in the 50s and 60s adopt rubber bowling ball. The famous Don Carter really made the ebonite bowling balls famous. Let's go to the next one, the Columbia 300, the yellow dot, the famous yellow dot. These were adopted in 1970s by the Professional Bowlers Association and the great PBA Hall of Famer Mark Roth won a lot of titles with the Columbia Yellow Dot. Next bowling ball is the urethane bowling ball. This generation bowling ball, the Ebonite Nitro, really started to see the friction and a lot, lots more hook on the bowling lane with ball motion. This is the, the third generation we're gonna look at today, the urethane, and then the last generation, the fourth generation bowling ball is what we see today. This is the GB4, the reactive resin. Lots of hook, lots of friction on the lane, lots of angle, uh, the cores are much different. Those are the four generation bowling balls we're gonna take a look at today. Let's start talking about the lane environment. We're gonna be testing these four generation bowling balls. This environment we're bowling on today is a, a very blended oil pattern, about 10 mils of oil compared to about 24, 26 mils of oil in league patterns, which is really almost uh, much more than less, like 75% less. The outsides, just like a league pattern, there's a lot of friction outside. So you're gonna see the ball coming off regardless whether it's a rubber bowling ball or a reactive resin. So we're gonna take uh, a really good look and pay attention to the ball motion from generation to generation. The first generation bowling ball we're gonna demonstrate on this lane today is the rubber bowling ball from Ebonite. In fact, this bowling ball I found on the rack and put a thumb sleeve in, some grips. I haven't thrown a rubber bowling ball in years, but I don't expect this ball to hook much. It's very, very hard. There's not a core in it. Uh, so there's not much technology. And again, this ball is well over a hundred years old. Let's go out and take a look. Notice uh, the, the, uh, the just the overall ball motion of this rubber bowling ball as it's going down the lane. It was just really, really straight in the front. I think I was hitting around four or five at the arrows down lane. I was, probably around three, four, and it was really slow off the back, which I expected. Rubber bowling balls, very, very hard. There's no core in the inside. The, there's no physics in the inside of the bowling ball, and I expected that. As the ball's rolling down, it's just very, very smooth. Uh, not much uh, angle or, or entry through the through the pins. Probably worked well in the early, early 1900s, even the 50s and 60s, but in today's high volume environments of oil, uh, you want to keep the rubber bowling ball in your bag. So the next generation bowling ball I'm going to be throwing here is the uh, Columbia Yellow Dot, which the pros really made famous back in the 1970s. You saw what my rubber bowling ball did. Not a lot of hook, and I'm hoping this ball, uh, it's got a little bit more friction on the lane, and you can see more hook. Let's take a look. Well, the first thing you're going to notice is I'm much further left with my feet uh, at the foul line. I'm about 10 boards left, so uh, yes, it does hook more than that rubber bowling ball we talked about, the ebonite ball. This yellow yellow dot, this plastic ball, you start to see it pick up a little bit more in the bin lane as what we've seen some of the modern day balls. And I can see why the pros coming off of you know the 1960s and the 70s when the yellow dot came out, how much uh, how much more they liked it, how much more popular it became, just because of what you're even seeing on this 10 mils today on, on the video that you're seeing the ball go down the lane. How it's picking up, it's a little faster off the spot at the back. Still not what we see today, but lots more hook. Let's take a look at what we saw in the 1980s with the next generation, the urethane bowling ball. One of my old tour bowling balls here, the Ebonite Nitro urethane bowling ball, the urethane generation, which really made a leap 
when it comes to technology and bowling balls. This one was one of the balls I threw a lot back in 1990. Still got the PBA mill hole, got the old contour grips. I did put a uh, interchangeable sleeve into thump so I could throw it today. Uh, but what you're gonna see today with this ball, lots more hook than the Columbia Yellow Dot that we just showed. Uh, this ball here uh, is, um, it's got just a lot more footprint on the lane, uh, more friction going down the lane. It's much faster off the spot. So as I mentioned, urethane hooks a lot more. Uh, now as I get lined up, you can see I'm starting to get to the 1-3 pocket. I'm about 15 boards further left with my feet uh, than the previous shot. So that's, that's quite a bit. Notice how it, it's much stronger in the mid lane. So I've got more friction, more footprint hitting the lane. It's coming off the spot, as I mentioned earlier, a little quicker. Not what we see today, but much better. And this, these balls, whether it, uh, it was the nitro and any other, the other year thing balls that we've seen in the 1990s, really transformed the game to what we see today. And the last most recent updated generation, the reactive resin. This ball, again, is a personal ball, a GB4. Uh, it's got the most updated reactive resin cover stock. And you're gonna see these balls really grab the mid lane and they're super fast off the spot at the back of the pattern. Super fast means lots of motion going toward the pins. Uh, much different than what we've seen in the previous three generations. This ball and these reactive resin bowling balls today, lots of hook, lots of versatility. The physics are very, very strong. You can change the covers. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it really, really is a different type of bowling ball than the previous three generations. I'm about 25 or 28 boards left from the rubber bowling ball that we started with today. Uh, lots of hook. You're gonna see a lot more mid lane, a lot quicker response at the back of the pattern. Uh, and I can basically throw it any, anywhere right and it's still gonna return back to the pocket. And that's the same thing I saw back in 1992 when I was with uh, my buddy and roommate, Mark McDowell, who really changed the sport of bowling when he won the AC Delco in 1992 with the famous Excalibur the first week uh, that it kind of was exposed on tour. Uh, Mark drilled it and the rest is history. And that's the one thing we noticed, same thing you're seeing today compared to these other generation bowling balls, much more friction, more footprint, a lot more response down lane. Uh, and that's, uh, that's our most recent generation, the reactive resin. Well, Mike, that was really cool seeing the four different generations of bowling balls, the evolution of bowling balls, so to speak. And you, when you go from rubber bowling ball all the way to reactive resin, you can see how far we've come in the sport of bowling. You know, you, you saw the hook uh, differences from the ball made 100 plus years ago all the way to the most recent. I was almost 30 boards difference with where I was sliding at the fall line. And you saw the most recent where you could basically throw as far right as you want and it would, it would get back to the pocket. Where the first one, I was right on top of the hard rubber bowling ball. What a huge difference. Huge difference. So certainly the bowling balls have come a long, long way. And we appreciate you demonstrating for us today, Mike. That was a lot of fun, Mike, from playing the gutter to, I actually looked like I could hook it now, Mike. <laughs> yeah, you had a lot of room there with the reactive ball. Thanks for watching our video today, and we will see you on the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video today. Hopefully you learned something you can apply to your game. Do us a favor, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Also, if you'd like to get backstage access to our coaches, you can join our online community at backstagebowling.com. Use the coupon code SAVE20 to save $20 off an annual subscription. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.